whether you're in the market for a condo or for a house, last month the real estate market in the GTA has been pretty crazy. Just yesterday on City News, I was telling you how the price for homes, average homes across the GTA, was down about 6%, and some are now getting caught in the market slowdown. I spoke with one man today who, like many, purchased a home in March, which was pretty much the hottest month on record, though his old home hadn't sold yet, and like many, that house still sits on the market this hour. We're out uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Caught in the housing hoopla, Bruce, who asked we only use his first name, bought a downtown home in March. Little did anyone know that was right when the market was hitting its most recent boiling point. Did you feel compelled you had to jump on something then when the, when the property came up? Uh, definitely, that was the advice we were getting. A couple weeks later, around mid-April, Bruce and his wife listed their home in York Region. The activity was good for about two days and it just died. Their puzzling predicament just happened to coincide with the provincial government's housing measures announced on April 20th. We didn't think the government would step in as quickly and as dramatically as they did. Um, and even if they did, uh, who really thought it would have such an impact? As we first told you recently on City News, the number of real estate sales is down in nearly every corner of the region. Bruce says he's fortunate he was able to approve the bridge financing from the bank, though the costly short-term loan, which helps purchasers bridge the gap between old and new mortgages, is far from ideal. The funding finally came through, but we're paying huge fees, huge interest rates. They are probably the two most stressful days in my life. And he's not alone. City News has spoke to multiple people in the exact same stomach-turning situation, with one mortgage broker reporting multiple calls from clients every day inquiring about bridge financing in recent weeks. We're probably seeing like a tenfold increase in the number of consumers that not necessarily are taking bridge financing, but at least are entertaining the idea. Another issue real estate agents we have spoken with admit to advising clients to purchase before selling. Is that maybe one of the reasons some people have been caught up in, in this a little bit because the market's been a little different over the last month? Absolutely. I feel for those people that bought in March and are trying to sell their property now to move in. It's important to exercise more prudence. Canadian home buyers don't have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in you know, in spare capital to manage a cash flow of an extra property. How stressful has this been for you both emotionally, financially? This has definitely been uh, the most stressful time for my wife and I in our whole lives. Financially, emotionally, spiritually. But we're, uh, we're trusting God's going to get us through that, through this whole thing, and uh, so far he has. Now, some economists are pointing the finger right at the province, saying when they announced these measures, they should have given consumers a month or two heads up before they came into effect. They said they could have saved people thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, we reached out to the housing minister, Chris Ballard, today. His office got back to us just before airtime, sending us a statement which in part reads, for a number of months prior to announcing our fair housing plan on April 20th, 2017, our government clearly stated on many occasions that we were looking at developing a comprehensive set of plans to stabilize the housing market. We urge all prospective home buyers and sellers to speak with experts to ensure they are informed of all market factors before making real estate decisions.